What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hadfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Scoop. Brian Altano, Brr. and Sam Claybo. Even more scoops than usual. We've got a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about Project Scorpio, of course. We're going to talk about arcade sports games. But first, a word from our sponsor. Thanks, Damon. Want a Nintendo Switch? Of course you do. That's right. This week, Cheesy Grooves and IGN are teaming up to give you a chance to win a Nintendo Switch console, Breath of the Wild, and a six-month supply of Cheesy Grooves. Just go to go.ign.com slash Cheesy Grooves for more info. Switching back to you, Damon. Thanks, Naomi. All right, down to business. Tell me about these Scorpion arcade games. Yeah, <laughs> sounds very exciting, right? <laughs> Uh, last year at E3, Microsoft, uh, they didn't reveal this Project Scorpio, but they sort of announced it officially, and they told us at the time it was going to be the most powerful console yeah. ever made. They're telling the truth, it turns out. Uh, today no we got the uh, specs for Project Scorpio. Microsoft revealed them to, uh, what is it, Digital Foundry? Digital yeah. Foundry, yeah. 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 Damon, correct. I'm so excited for you to explain all this, to what I, this all means. There's a bunch yeah, so of you're numbers. You're going to break it down for us, right? There's a bunch of numbers and flops. Uh, <laughs> How that, many flops? There's a lot of flops. Six, six teraflops. <laughs> Not, that stuff doesn't really mean a lot to me. However, in layman's terms, it is going to be the most powerful console ever, significantly more powerful than the PS4 Pro. In even more layman's terms, it's going to be one bomb-ass box. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. That's what it says on the front. One bomb-ass box. We know the CPU <laughs> <Air> Justin. <laughs> the CPU is going to be 30% faster than Xbox One. Mm -hmm. The GPU will be 4.6 times more powerful. Ah, you feel that scorpion sting? Oh, yep. That's, that's yep. a lot, man. I mean, that is a lot. That's not all. The RAM and hard drive read speeds have been improved, meaning read speed. 4K resolutions should be easily achieved and maintained. Okay. Uh, you know, there was always an issue with uh, games not like running that. at, at uh, well, on 60 Pro, frames per second on right? Xbox One, yeah, you 1080 choose. Yeah. Yeah. You have to choose whether you want 4K or 60 frames yeah. or like a graphical enhancement. So 4K right. 60 FPS is no joke, man. Like that's Regular Xbox One games can receive performance boosts or super sampled resolutions, Ooh. even on a regular HD TV. Yeah, so your 1080p set will, your games will look better. Look better. Yep. They're down and uh, the new Project Scorpio will seemingly run all Xbox One and 360 backwards compatible games better than on standard Xbox One or Xbox One S hardware, meaning load times, frame rates, resolutions should all benefit. I think this is great. Uh, I, 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 do you have more? In a stress test. Oh, here we go. Forza 6. The Project Scorpio was displaying the game at 4K, 60 frames per second, using around 60 to 70 percent of its power. Ooh. But a regular Xbox One. What was the rest of the power doing? Is it just hanging just out, chilling, man? Just waiting. And it's got to be doing something. It's uh, they call espresso. It, it, they call that being on deck. Yeah, it's cold, on deck, cold, cold chilling in the cut. <laughs> a regular Xbox One. <laughs> a regular Xbox One runs Forza 6 at 1080p, 60 frames, using 90 percent of its power. So wow. that's sort of a difference. There. It's a significantly. Whew, there we go. That's a lot. I, you also uh, didn't mention just like another thing to mention is that this does have a 4K Blu-ray drive, which mm. uh, the PS4 Pro doesn't. It just has a standard Blu-ray. Nope. Drive and people gave him a little bit of a hard time for that. I oh mean, yeah, for no. sure. No, I think uh, generally, like I own every console, play games on every console. Super thousand foot view. I prefer my PS4 of my Xbox One. Play more games on it. Like the just like the experience more. But this feels like like the PS4 Pro didn't buy. Felt like a half step. Didn't mm -hmm. feel like it was worth the cash. Microsoft waiting a year and coming out with just a beastly machine. Like we don't know price yet. We don't know all kinds of details yet. But I, I, again, like my snap judgment is that they're doing the smarter, better thing. They're they're finally reacting to PlayStation's yeah. move. It just it's right. Like well, the PS4 Pro is marginally yes, more like powerful. That one E3. This is not marginally more powerful. It is significantly more powerful. Right. Yeah. It's right. The, like it's it's really exciting. And for what it's worth, Digital Foundry, based on these specs, guesses that we're looking at a five hundred dollar machine. Yeah, just based off like the internals. And the yeah, just down. what this stuff costs. I yeah, I feel like I'd be amazed if it was that cheap. I really? can't wait to be proven oh, wrong. I think it has. I mean, Microsoft, they're only falling farther and farther behind uh, the sales uh, just right. race. But they're not going to force a connect on you anymore. They get to save there. Yep. Yeah, save save true. some money there. Yeah. Maybe it'll be back. Who knows? I mean, I bought so I bought a PS4 Pro and a 4K TV, and playing something on like Horizon on yeah. it is stunning. Yeah. But I also can't play Horizon on my Xbox One. So to That's me, this thing. is all really cool news. But unless it sort of comes hand in hand with a restructuring of their approach to games, yep. I don't care. And I say I don't care as a guy who's going to buy one on day one. You got to buy I do all that. your movies all over again. You're going to like that, right? Oh, buy all my <laughs> movies. Yeah, I just stream them. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> all my movies. I the- yeah, I had all those HD DVDs for so long. I had to get rid of every um, single time you think like, oh, Blu-ray, that's it. No more formats. Yeah. Blu-ray is it. And then like now you got that Blu-ray 4K. No yeah, there's oh. 4K now too. So um, I don't know. I mean, like we, this has been a weird generation for Xbox because I have an Xbox One Day One edition and I have played my Switch more in the last month than I played my Xbox One in the last two years. And I've tried. Like I played Inside. That was a great <laughs> game. It came to yeah. PS4. I played Tomb Raider. That was awesome on Xbox One. It came to PS4. I'm not really a Forza guy. Yep, I'm not yeah. really a Halo guy. Halo Warriors. I tried, I tried to get into Gears, and I played it for a couple hours. It was really cool. But ultimately, I keep coming back to PlayStation because I gravitate towards Horizon yep. and The Last of Us and Uncharted. And you know, On the software side, they've definitely hit some stumbling blocks. Yeah. Uh, they canceled Scalebound, which everyone was very upset about, um, w- you know, which, again, you don't cancel a game that deep in development unless they had reason to. So um, it's tough to be too upset about yeah. that. But, but man, uh, if it's that big of a leap, we're all going to want to play Shadow of war on that that's I mean, the thing right? right and that's the thing i was that gonna get PC, to like i feel like yeah people you know they're it does beg the question who is this for who is this for like again because i i as <clears> i've <throat> mentioned on school many times i built that supercomputer last fall which makes the xbox one a little bit less appealing but still like if they can start to run away with like look on a crazy pc and on scorpio this game does all this crazy stuff graphically and then other stuff is kind of left a little bit behind like that really changes the message for them did you do a tech specs uh, comparison between justin's pc (laughs) and the xbox well we should get into that a little bit and and to be crazy clear no (laughs) None of us up here are experts when it comes to Oh, no, that wasn't it. already obvious. But I've caught not, two yeah. scorpions in my life. <laughs> two, two scorpions. Is that true? Yes, it's Mi- absolutely true. And they're very scary in Arizona. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Clear, Scorpion. They're very poisonous. That's two more than most that. people, so that's good. Um, yeah. I think it's, so, I think it's uh, Planet Earth 2 that has a really good battle between a bat and a scorpion. God. Yeah. Also looks it's great. In nature is metal. Well, yeah. Which wins? You'll have to tune in to find out. Do not spoil that. I am very excited about it. If a scorpion, that's just wrong. Well, I saw a spider eat a bird once. Ugh. Yeah, that's a video. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> so you bring up a good question, Sam, about specking it out against my computer. Our original thought. <laughs> that's a good question for you. <laughs> we came in this morning and we're like, you know, yeah. we, the, what we do at IGN is try to explain to people the why or the so what behind the news. Yeah. And so we're like, let's compare this against the computer. But that comparison doesn't really work. You know, the Xbox One has so much custom silicone in it and uh, and it's doing things with DirectX 12 software as well to, 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 to use that software and that GPU and CPU more efficiently, that there's not really a direct one-to-one comparison. Right. Um, you can say, here's a six teraflop gaming computer and compare that against a six teraflop console, but they're just it, it really is apples and oranges and there's not a direct comparison to, to, to be drawn there. If you, look, if you look at the start of this generation, uh, it went in Sony's favor because one of the main reasons, um, besides Microsoft's weird messaging of like game sharing yeah. and always online, was so which was very bad, um, which they then reneged and came back on almost immediately, um, was the fact that games have looked better on PS4 than Xbox One uh, almost this entire time. And it's like so, just like ever so slightly, ever right? Ever so slightly. And that was enough to tip people over. So I'm interested to see where that goes. I will say, like, you know, I just gave Microsoft hell for not having games that I'm particularly connected to. Yeah. But third-party stuff could tilt in that. Like, if Battlefront 2 looks phenomenal on the Xbox Scorpio, and it will. And it looks, tw- you know, twice as good as it does on the PS4 Pro, then maybe I'll go there. Like, we, I mean, no one has 4K TVs yet. Like, I, do any of you? Well, Brian I just said he has yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you, you say you just bought one. Yeah, a one. couple yeah. people here bought um, them just last they're not. Should, they're, they're at the point now where you can get a really good yeah. one for like $1,000. I mean, I shouldn't price, say nobody, less. but I just mean like maybe this year's year they reach their tipping point. But even like really hardcore enthusiasts like 4K TV is just not everywhere yet. Yeah. So like how this changes the 1080p gaming experience is sort of an underrated like it'll be important. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like for me, I have a 1080p TV. Probably gonna keep it for another couple of years. So um, the 4K support is nice to be future proof, but it's really more about more about how is it gonna downsample and make games look better today. Sure. Yeah. I think their main concern is going this fall against a PS4 Pro bundle with Horizon yep. or something like that. Or I think something. You know. Or God of War. Or God of War. Something that's like a, a hundred or two hundred dollars cheaper, and you have a you know you have a 4K gaming device. Uh, we'll see where that goes. But yeah, again, this comes down to games. And I, like you said, who is this for? If you're this crazy about graphics, get a PC. All of the games work yeah. there. You know, it's not like on like Horizon, I can't play on the best PC in the world. Just can't. Uncharted 4, I can't do that. The Last of Us 2, God of War. Software can't do sells that. hardware. You can have yeah. the best console in the world, but if there's no games yeah. to play on it. We, we actually have a news story on IGN today where uh, Microsoft addressed who they think the console is for. And then uh, it was Mikey Barra from Microsoft who said it's a, they're aimed at the hardcore, the hardest of the hardcore gamer who like wants 
the most premium gaming experience. I mean, that's, that's what like. But small, again, yeah. But like marketing one hundred and one is like the, the like if you are working for Coca Cola, the easiest thing to do is to get someone that drinks two cokes to drinking three a day. It's not to get yeah, someone that yeah. doesn't drink it to drinking one. So like they're gonna try to get their hardcore Xbox audience upgrading to the to the Scorpio first. But Coke wants to give the world a Coke. <laughs> Which means everyone in the world should be drinking, co or not yeah. shouldn't, because it, it kills you. But um, in in a perfect world for them, everyone will be drinking Coke. Everyone's exactly out soft. But again, like going out at launch, making this thing successful day one, their audience are the people that are already Xbox gamers. Yeah, because I feel like the PS4 or even the Pro is for. I mean, a PS4 Pro or PS4 is like you can get a PS4 for dirt cheap now. Yeah. you can get a Lego game for it. You can be five years old and have the time of your life. But are you going to want a Scorpio for 500 bucks? Like, that's such a small group. Yeah. And I appreciate them, as someone who has a, a, a PS4 Pro and a 4K TV, I appreciate them going for that higher end. I mean, uh, it is you. Like, yeah. you, you, it's, it, you're it's the person. You have a 4K TV, love video games, don't have a big supercomputer. The weird third caveat there is that I buy every console on launch day, <laughs> yeah. no matter how so good or bad anyway. it is, exactly. because I love them and I'm stupid. Yeah. And Xbox One is the first one I've ever purchased where I'm like... And I have some regrets about this, to I be mean, totally honest. Like, I haven't spent a ton of time with that that console. It's going to make fall interesting, and people will have the other choice of getting a Switch and Zelda, which is 410 bucks. Yeah. Like, I loved... 410 like, bucks? Is, that, is it 350 plus no, 300. 300. 300. 300 plus 60. Yeah. 360. Yeah. Uh, so, like, yeah. that decision, too. Like, a lot of people are only going to get the switch for one game i think at the and same like, price for me at this point i'm like that's that's the best decision well that and that's we the won't thing talk right? about zelda yeah, again we're, not, we're not going on a zelda don't worry tangent. about it well but no sam, but you're competing down. that's what you're competing with right yeah. sam makes a good point that there's you know gamers have finite money to spend on games every year every you know whatever budgetary yeah. period and uh so they are absolutely competing with the switch in kind of in a way that they're not competing with the other consoles yeah usual it's two hot new things on the market and people it's a lot of people exciting one. holiday season yeah do we think Microsoft wanted to get their specs out of the way now so at E3 they can focus on those games? Yes, they yes. better. I you think they have one yeah. first-party game they're going to show that's just going to be like mind-blowing. I mean, we crackdown. still don't know where Crackdown is, right? Maybe bring Crackdown yeah. back. I mean, I think, it's, I think it's the biggest, I think it's Halo. Yeah, it's the biggest, biggest things that they I mean, have. if they want to get people on board, then they would have to have they're, next they're, Halo. It's yeah. going to be Halo, what are they, on six? Yeah, I unless they do like a, unless they do like a reach or an ODST type. Well, of thing. I mean, what, like whatever the next Halo game is, it's just going to go completely ape. On they have Scorpio. the Conquer bad, bad Fur Day license. Yeah. Look at all that fur. Yeah, that's true. that yeah. fur could be amazing. I mean, but again, or like, it, so am I just like if I'm not really into Forza and I'm not really into Halo, and like Gears is cool here and there, am I just not an Xbox guy? Like, yeah. am I just out of the loop of this of this system forever? Because I loved Ori. I loved Sunset Overdrive. Like, I want to see more shit like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're you not graphically intensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, yeah. I mean, the truth is, like, if there's four or five big Xbox franchises that you're not into, mm -hmm. it's like, well, <laughs> like you kind of answered your own question. Well, I mean, I think they need to answer the question of they sold half as many PS4s yeah. uh, as PS4 this time around. So maybe they need to reach more people like me. Maybe I, the Halo, the Gears, and the Forza is not working. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, um, again, I, I prefer my PS4 this generation, but I played Witcher on Xbox and I played, you know, I played Dragon Age on Xbox. Like, yep. I played big games on that console. And, like, did they look marginally better? Did they one run at 900p and it ran at 1080p on the other? I like, but it's the same. Like, it didn't, I didn't care. It didn't, I didn't notice no, either. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was totally like those games were gorgeous and fun and great. Like, well, if, I, I mean, so inside Ori and Sunset Overdrive, two out of three of those games could have run on the Switch. Yeah. Right, and there were two out of three of the, my favorite at, at games I, I played on Xbox. Could have too. Yeah, probably. I mean, at this point, for sure. Yeah, I beat sure. that game. I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, the only game I play on my supercomputer is Binding of Isaac. So yeah, oh, really. And yeah. so that's the weird thing, right? Like, Gosh. I mean, all the yeah. power in the world, and you end up with something like that. So I'm really excited to see what they say at E3. Yeah. I want to see Super games. Excited. I want to see that sizzle reel. Um, and I'm going to buy one. I just want to feel justified on that purchase. I hope it's like a wacky looking console. Like that's yeah, looking yeah, weird and, and the cool. Xbox One is ugly. Yeah, but they're the also Xbox, standard. I think right the now. Xbox One S is pretty pretty the slick. Xbox looking. One, one mm -hmm. S is really cool it looks looking. Really nice. The uh, I hope they I hope there's a cool trade in deal and I can get rid of my Xbox One day day one. Well, no, there's a yeah. thought. Like if I can get half this thing paid for out of the box, because to get rid of this thing, that can I you don't find need. your Connect wherever it is? No, no. I lost oh, mine. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> so do we? Is this? The start of a new console generation? What? Yeah, the, totally. This, this no, fall. I don't know anymore. Three new consoles. Generation I don't think so. Dead. I think, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's so crazy. It's considered a mid-cycle upgrade, not like a whole new story. But then, like, so is yeah. the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't well, know anymore. They're, saying, <laughs> they're yeah. saying, look, look, look. Every single game we ever come out is going to support Xbox One yeah. and Xbox Scorpio. But then in three years, you're going to be like, 
Yeah, this game doesn't support Xbox. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they it's, did that with yeah. like DSi. It's, DSi. it's weird yeah. that even in Same these thing. specs, like you meant, they mentioned Xbox 360 so many times. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to talk about that thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's get on to the new stuff. No, there's gonna be a new. It there's gonna be an incremental upgrade, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I think console generations are over. Yeah. Did you guys know Persona 5 came out for PS3? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's nuts. That's, that's what we were rare. wondering. Yeah, like, is this the last? Collector's PS3 notification. Game? All right, let's check in with the listeners. Hey, listeners. Hey, hey, listeners. Listeners, remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com, just like James did. And he wants to know about day one patches. Yeah. He says, I truly believe we live in a gaming golden age. The amount and variety of games available has never been greater. However, in my mind, the scourge of this golden era is the dreaded day one patch. Or more specifically, premature releases of games. This is especially acute with regard to AAA titles. I, sh I should be a gaming company's dream consumer as I have lots of free time and disposable income, yet I almost never buy games I want at launch as they are riddled with bugs, and I know if I wait, they will be substantially improved in the mm. coming years. Yeah. I often want to support quality franchises and original titles with new ideas by purchasing them at full price, but reviews almost always say they are great except for performance issues and bugs. My question... Is there any path forward for this issue, or are we forever doomed to the new business model of premature releases followed by months of major bug fixes and patches? Do I, as a consumer, have any power to affect positive change? As insiders, what are your unique insights, and do you know of any positive movement in the industry towards a solution? I mean, it used to be Nintendo was the company that would release rock solid, like, you know, that, that was it. Like, the game's yeah, it, but, but, even, even, but even Zelda got patched. Yeah. But it's hard to argue that that's a bad thing when hey, this thing that was a problem isn't a problem anymore. Zelda got patched weirdly, too, because they were just like, it is better now. Yeah, like they, they, didn't, they, didn't allow, say, they didn't say any patches. Usually you get like, oh, the trees are, you know, they don't clip with your armor anymore and stuff like that. No, I mean, it's it's 2017 and everything is terrible and nothing works. Yeah. Like, we, uh, my wife was... Um, the golden age of games, as James called well, it. Well, that may be true I mean, on, like, a big picture, but if you get down into it, like... It, like do you remember when, like, your phone or your iPad used to just work, right? Yeah. And now it doesn't. Like, I'm trying to, like, my wife's trying to download something on her iPad, and, like, it was full, so then she's deleting things, and then she had to update her iTunes password, then she had to update her iOS software, and, like, she can't figure that out, and then it's prompting her for the stuff she doesn't have, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I can't. And then it's like, I get There's kids on your it. lawn. Yeah. But that's like, man, I I, I do <laughs> believe this is that's has gone off the rails a little bit. I admit, <laughs> like video games, are the same. Like you, we all have that experience where you get a new game and you assume you're not playing it that night. Right. Like I uh, I get home at around six and then um, I get to play games at around nine. And the first thing I do if I have a new game is I put it in my console right away and hope that in the next three hours that happens, it chews through whatever it has to do yeah. to get me ready to play that game hours no, later. No, I do the same. I'll come in like with my backpack on, a jacket and sunglasses and headphones in, and I'm like putting putting yeah. stuff into my into my PS4 to make sure it starts downloading yeah. so that I can get to it eventually. Yeah, I don't know why you need that detail about the backpack. No, like I mean, like I literally don't even put a oh, thing down yeah, before you I'm put the thing down. <laughs> I don't get it took dressed me a second up for too, it. but I was like, <laughs> "All right, time to play Persona 5. <laughs> it's, like one of, it's that Rumble backpack. Yeah, like a '90s yeah. commercial. No, um, I think that so much of video games are uh, multiplayer centric now too, and by nature of that, uh, those are constantly evolving, ever changing things too. Like, uh, there's always balance patches for everything nowadays. That's like Blizzard Secret Sauce. Yeah, of like over like Hearthstone. Like, people are like, aren't you going to be done balancing the cards someday or Overwatch? I mean, all their games, you know, they're balancing World yeah. of Warcraft classes. And the answer is like, no, balance is never, ever done. No. Like, they're like, okay, priests are a little bit too powerful right now, so we're going to nerf them. Oops, we went too far, and now we need to buff them back up. Like, they, they don't yeah. even try to reach a point where it's like, okay, we got it. We nailed it. They yeah, just assume it's like, that it's like, forever. It's like now people have figured out a way to use a priest card yeah. that no one ever thought of, and now that's yeah. made... Priest OP, yeah. so, so, they, so they it, always, it, it never think, ends. I think the the crux of his conversation is sort of like, are people going to use this as a kind of a get out of jail free card? Like, are developers going to put something out to hit a deadline to make the sales for the for the you know fiscal quarter or whatever yeah. there it is, and then fix it later on? Um, and yeah, I think people are going to abuse the system, but I think the good thing is that 
us uh, in the press and gamers and people everywhere are going to be vocal about it. Oh yeah, and it's no, we're not going to just be like you ship the broken game and we deal with it. Um, they're still going to get the ma the large majority of their sales in those first few days, which kind of sucks. But I think we're seeing it change. I think that like Steam is cracking down on just like garbage ass games getting dumped everywhere. I hope that iOS does the same thing. You know, like I think we're, I think it'll start to get better. A lot of Steam, Steam's these, the this is following the Steam pattern. Like a lot of people play games for free for many years before yeah. buying them. And uh, that that that's like a whole thing. Well, you know, the, the, there's like go ahead. Go no, you go ahead. All right. Well, I was just gonna say there's this kind of weird angle on this, which it used to be when a game was finished and it came out, like that company either you know was make or break. Like the the, the staff stayed there and made another game if the game sold, or they kind of all got laid off and they yeah. went to other companies. And um, one thing this is doing is employing the people that made a good you know potentially a good game for a longer time to work on that game for a longer time and to iterate on it and make it like a really a better game and right this might might be good for games well the but scenario it just sucks for the early adopters so here's yeah, my yeah. here's what I propose okay. okay release all games in January mm. fix them for the rest of the year oh God and then in Christmas you pick then, up yeah. which ones are the best <laughs> January is the release month yes yeah, yeah. Right, that makes sense I mean so this <laughs> we uh, I do it kind of happened this year the, we well, got yeah. so much stuff yeah. early on that, one, that yeah. of the games I mean Final Fantasy was right before yeah but of the games that are being like perpetually fixed which Resident is Final Evil Fantasy and, Resident Evil well <clears throat> it, it was fine but uh, but uh, Zelda got a fix but then Mass Effect is the big uh, elephant in the room right like yeah. these are giant games that like by the fall they're gonna be they're gonna be much better I think the issue too is stuff like narrative patches is is a big deal yeah. like where they did it with Final Fantasy they did it uh, and they're probably gonna see it with Mass Effect and that's why already. I stopped playing Final Fantasy I'm right like, I'll play it on I'll play the game of the year edition or the PC edition whenever the ultimate edition comes out right because I they think not have the right people in QA you think to like say like this part's like you know, a bad story. Or they just ran out of time. Know. They had someone yeah. in some office coming down and screaming at them to release their the game. game out, yeah, <clears throat> the game out. For the story? I mean, so what this scenario sort of ignores is that there were games for a very long time that shipped broken forever, yeah. and you couldn't do anything. You that, couldn't pack them. That's why it's them. such a Sophie's... Like, that's yeah. why it's such a crappy situation to be in, because, like, yeah, he's saying... Like, his original question was, like, what can he do as a consumer? And the obvious answer is don't support that bad behavior. Don't buy the game. But the flip side is, is it bad behavior? Because it used to be broken forever. Forever. So it's like, I, that's why you just, I don't know, you just kind of shrug and say everything's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, before, like, always online connected internet devices and stuff like yeah. that, they would just, like, you'd have to, what, like, they mail do. your game to somebody? To they do use it as a crutch, though, for, for sure. sure. That's like, for the sure. ability well, I think, to... Yeah. We're also talking about two separate things. They know, they know that can be fixed yeah. at a time, so that's why they... So, I mean, games, games that launch yeah. broken um, and then get patched later versus games that have a day one patch. So, what if console makers imposed a size limit to the day one patch? Well, but I think the, the reason I like the day one patch is because there's there's a chunk of time after a game gets finished and then that master disc gets sent off to have a million yep. copies of it printed and mailed out everywhere. And that's weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks that now they can keep working on their game and then just push a patch. So, But is it like 15 gigs weeks? Because sometimes well, you get a 15 gig day one patch yeah. and I think that's kind of nonsense. That's, you know? that's a fair point. Yeah. And, that's, and it, well, that's why I wonder, could going all digital... Yeah, help solve that issue because then they don't have to have the weeks, months yeah. lead time to finish their code to get it ready for manufacturing. Once discs, they can take, they could work on it all the way up to launch day, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, the weird thing is like we saw this with Kanye West's last album. <laughs> like this is yeah. an album that that's he, crazy that he's been continually updating that. Album. Yeah, like he arbitrarily picked a release date, which was like I think it was like a midnight on a Wednesday or something. Yeah. By the time he was done with it, he like ran out of the studio and hit enter or upload yeah. on like on Tune Tune Core. Core. <laughs> Yeah, and there it is. <laughs> And um, then throughout that, he's changed it. And there's like, there, you can have, there's so different weird. versions of that album you can have. Did they fix that song? Which was one? It Wolves? Or what was the really, what was the one that there was two versions of it? I don't know. Probably. Anyway. Yeah, the first one was just Wolves Howling, and the, the, he actually put right. a song there instead. <laughs> no. Um, I do, the last point I want to make about this yes. is, just, is to separate out early access from this discussion, um, mm. you know, which is, you know, Steam. I, it, the odd thing is, there's, there's a group of people that like to play and watch like jank like broken games like mm. like rust and i i'm i played a lot of hours of rust right. an enduringly popular game incredibly broken you know and it's early access it's jank like people like being on the bleeding edge of like uh we don't know how anything in this game works everything's half broken yeah. um you know running around some crazy world and figuring it out together as a community with other youtubers and other people on these early access forums that's like a thing now yeah, and like course. my sort of not conspiracy theory but my my theory about this is that like 
those games they they never get finished. No, like those games never like they they peter out and the community dies by the before the game actually came. Like if you came out if with a really polished, finished, non early access version of that sort of multiplayer survival genre, I don't think people would like it. I think people like you know seeing like oh the game updated and now I there's this crazy stuff in it. That, you think Minecraft is the same way? Yeah, I think so Mi- long Minecraft, Minecraft was, it built was like the, a little subscription community around. Minecraft the, the was, a, was a prototype of that. And like those are all free things. But, well, and so, yeah, I mean, but, but, but now bucks, there's but, like a pay version of that. Yeah. Final thing for me is mm-hmm. that game preservation is gonna suck for these games, yeah. oh, and yeah. it's really bad Whoa. for that. Why do you say so that? So my shelf of discs that I have from this generation will not be the things that lots of people experience because when I put in that disc on a console, which is great, we still have discs because that's great because it's most of the game code. But with a day one patch that I won't be able to download once the internet fundamentally shifts. I see. When you're which trying to play just absolutely the disc happen. In the yeah. I mean, there's t- plenty of internet games from the 90s which are unfeasibly difficult to get running now. Yeah. Right? MMOs so that shut down. That's going to happen. And, yeah. uh, the, and those games, every the experience, the, maybe the best experience of Final Fantasy 15 will not be able to be experienced ever mm-hmm. because it'll only be downloadable, never be in a hard copy. and It'll be just purged from the internet at some point. We just don't know. There's yeah. no way to do it. Yeah. I mean, or even the broken version, just from an intellectual museum yes. standpoint, the, like the that original version, version of sure. Mass Effect will be kind of hard to find. Like, mm. if or no you want to sky or something like, like they're that. gonna change conversations and stuff. And if you want to see and find that original conversation, how do you do that? Like, you kind of can't. This is Terry from St. Louis. Hey, hey, Terry. He says I'm an enthusiastic baseball and hockey fan. Or she. And when I was younger, you're right. Uh, when I was younger, I would buy and play the annualized game franchises for each every year. As I've gotten older and have started actually attending these events like Mega Man? in person, go Blues and Cardinals, I have encountered a conundrum with the reality of limited leisure time and adult life. I have to be much more selective of how I spend my downtime. Because of this, I've had to reserve my game time for top titles. I want to play top titles. I like that. It sounds like something from Nintendo Power. <laughs> and separate my sports time for actually watching the games and following the teams, leaving no time to play sports games even if I want to. Ah. I attribute this in part to the ever-increasing realistic simulation aspect of modern sports games, which while I appreciate on a certain level, ultimately makes me question if I would rather play the game or just watch the real thing with my time. <laughs> I think games like the recent old-time hockey arcade and upcoming Mutant Football League are neat solutions to this predicament as they offer something outside of just a realistic sim sure. while still being enjoyable for fans of the sport. I guess my question is, why have these become so sparse nowadays when they used to be more prevalent and if anyone else feels the same way? That NBA game was just announced today. That's yeah, why I wanted to bring this up. Right. When it comes to sports games, it seems like most games fall into camps of not interested or, or sorry, most gamers fall into the camps of not interested or all in. And this seems like a largely untapped middle ground. So yeah, I wanted to say NBA Playgrounds mm-hmm. was just announced to be coming next month. Uh, and that's like an NBA Jam style arcade, you know, arcade basketball game. Yeah. NBA Jam was so fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that's those why, cartoony, crazy sports games are so great. That's why when I was the thinking about this. I've ever liked. NBA uh, Street was great. When I was yep. thinking about this email, like, I don't care. I don't follow Mario any Kart. sports in real life. But the number of, like, arcade sports video games that I've liked mm-hmm. over the years when I was thinking just off the top of my head, like, Punch Out, Tech Mobile, yeah. NES Play Action Football, yep, yes. Kings of the Beach, Hot Shots Golf, Blades of Steel, Bases all Loaded, Nintendo Golf RBI games. Baseball. Yep. Like I'd like Wayne all, Gretzky's 3D Hockey. I loved all those awesome. games. So, yeah. I think the answer to this question is kind of Nintendo. Nintendo's mm. constantly made these. There's like a Mario Sports Pack that just came out. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't recommend that one, but Nintendo makes them. <clears throat> Really good sports games. Well, what uh, comparatively, if you yeah. don't want Sims, I played a yeah. thousand hours of Sega Soccer Slam. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> think about what significant thing has happened in the last fifteen years when it comes to licenses and sports games. Think about that. Well, you can watch anything. It's, you at can any you time. can name one company that owns ninety percent of them, yeah. and you've seen not only in the arcade sports, but in every other type of even regular simulation sports, we've seen a significant like. Downgrade in the number of games made. Yeah, in, that's in interesting. Genres. When like EA got the NFL exclusivity, yep. um, everyone made the obvious statement: Well, without any competition from 2K or whatever, what's their motivation to make Madden really good? But it also eliminated the opportunity for you know NFL Blitz or some other franchise to just put a little bit different spin on it with right. real teams and real players. Yep. Um, I guess I'd never really thought about it from that perspective. Yeah, like, so I there mean, used to be people that would operate in a little bit different space, like find Madden, do your thing, sure. and we'll do this other thing. You lost a lot of the competition in the straightforward um, simulation. 
simulation genres, but yeah. also in like the arcade cartoony genres, those went away too. Because if you so, look at that old time hockey game, the teams in it are like yeah. the Brooklyn Badgers and stuff like that. It's not real teams. Like this one, this NBA game that we're pointing at, yeah, yeah, got an actual they license. license. Yeah. They got old school players. They got new school players. It's cool. Um, it's coming to Switch. I'm actually kind of excited for this one. Yeah. I'm not the biggest back. As there are sports fan, games but. like Rocket League. I mean, that's a that's well, a sports yeah. game. Yeah. You know that like is unlicensed and goofy. Like they they there's they can be immensely popular still. So I mean, it may be like a feel a little bit like an untapped market, but I think there's a lot. Also, of Also, Midway went away. Midway was like the they big the guys when it came that. to stuff like mm. this. You know, it used to be. I mean, things. It's hard to know why, but like taste just shit. like things kind of come and go with the wind. Like there was a period where like s- snowboarding games were just gigantic. Yep. Like winter sports yeah. was ever. That's I have sucks. never skied or snowboarded in my life, uh, but I loved. You know, I played all kinds of those games. Yeah. I mean, Steve we got came out, but yeah, wasn't. yeah, not really. And I mean, cool. you know, there, there was a while where they they made kart racers all the time. Everything was a mascot yeah. platforming game. Yeah. You know, we're seeing like that small sort of like we got Snake Pass and Ukulele back to back, and there'll be a couple more little things like that. But yeah, Did you guys see that like game that Steve and I were playing called Pigskin? Pigskin no. Football. Yeah. yeah, for it, Genesis. It's like right? yeah, it's like medieval. Two medieval teams like are brawling and playing football in like yeah. a really simplified way, and it's really funny and really um, like the it's really cartoony and cool. And he had played it as a kid a lot, so he brought it in just to try out. And that's what I always think of is like stuff like that or Base Wars, and right. Base Wars you know, which is like Wars robots playing fun. baseball. I yeah. played. I loved pigskin football so much as a kid. I had you played so it as many, a kid? Yeah, I had so many fond memories of it. But you know, I hadn't seen it in twenty years. And when I played it at, at your desk. I'm like, it, I really wish I wouldn't have played it because it's terrible. <laughs> it ruined your memories. <laughs> like it's all. It's like, I never played yeah. it. I thought it was like. I mean, I have a big appreciation yeah. for games of the past. And I thought it was really clever. Yeah, I loved like Blades of Steel growing up. It has it, a handicap like where a troll just comes out yeah. and plays for your team, and the troll mm-hmm. is like invincible. Yeah. So if you're like way behind, it rubber bands you by. Th- it's like troll release. And everybody goes troll, troll, yep. troll, <laughs> troll. And this is from like '92 or '93. Yeah. Yeah. It's super clever. Blades of Steel was cool because you can get in fights. Yeah. With the character, and then the fight during the fight scene, the characters were really big. It was yeah. awesome. It turned into a 2D fighting game. Right. And then yeah. sometimes after the second yeah. period, it would kick to like a mini game where you played Gradius. Yeah. Do you remember that? Like, that <laughs> I mean, was really cool. Joke. Um, remember remember one on one games like Jordan versus Bird? Oh, yeah. I've, yeah, yeah. I, I loved that, that game. From. Yeah. yeah. A lot of cool stuff like that. I don't know. It's interesting to see that stuff kind of ebb and flow. Yeah, it seems like there's an opportunity to bring that sort of stuff back. Maybe yeah. even with the Switch because it seems to be uh, so well suited to local multiplayer. Yeah, buy this, buy this new NBA game, I guess, if you want to see more stuff like that. I mean, it's like such an underrated thing that the Switch, every single person that owns a Switch has two controllers. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. So it's been a while yeah. since that happened. This is Magnus Duffy in Ireland. Oh. Great name. Hey, he says, Dear Damon and the Lads. Mm-hmm. You guys are the lads. That's cool also, band. Yeah, I'll that's the name it. of our band. Damon and the Lads. <laughs> yeah. Why? He says, why aren't there more advertisements in video games? I'm not the biggest fan of ads, especially when I see how they're used in mobile gaming, but I feel like they could be utilized better in some games and may even enhance the experience. Take loading screens, for example. There are still games that force you to stare at a black screen with text on it. I'm surprised the word Bloodborne hasn't melted onto my screen yet. Ah, why not slip an ad in they're there? Good. Which would lower the cost of the game or be contributed towards running multiplayer servers in other cases. I can understand people's trepidation of having Coca-Cola billboards in a GTA game or real advertisements on the radio, but personally I wouldn't mind if it were done tastefully and it could help the game feel more lifelike. I remember thinking it was cool racing around Wipeout Pure in my Puma ship or seeing Nivea stores in Splinter Cell Double Agent. Please discuss advertising in video games. Man, um, so when you buy... Full disclosure, IGN had an ad in Skate... I believe. Oh, did we really? Too. Wow. That's cool. That's For true. IGN guides through wow. McDonald's, a sponsorship. I don't even oh, wow. remember that. And I was skating, and I was writing the. I, I think I was writing the guide for that one. And I was like in all these skate. Well, I took pictures for Mark Ryan, who was yeah. the guy's team at the time. For like all these IGN and McDonald's like billboards. Yeah. Was a, Does everyone here own a Kindle? Yeah, I don't okay. own a Kindle. Nope. So when you bought a Kindle, did you have that option of spending ten extra dollars and getting it without ads? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Because mm. I didn't. <laughs> and I wish I had, yeah. Because I saw, I see every a, time I see an ad every single time I open it up, yeah. and like I would, I would gladly. And I think you can retroactively pay, pay to get rid of them, but I don't want to get to a point where like oh. you can buy a seventy dollars game because it doesn't have ads in it, but it's for sixty, it does, or for fifty, it does. That's what I was gonna say. I really have a hard time seeing. Uh, 
a publisher lower the price of a video game just because it has ads right. in it. There used to be, um, when I was new-ish in the industry, there was a startup, like a $100 million, like some gigantic company. I think they were called Massive, maybe? I might be making that name up. But anyway, they were an in-game advertising company. In-game yeah. advertising was the thing that was going to be the future of video games. And like every single concern or question that you might have had, they had like an answer for. They're like, well, how do you know people are actually seeing the ad? What if they're seeing it at such an extreme angle that they can't see our logo? And their software like tracked... Like it was on screen for one and a half seconds at this viewing angle. It took up this many pixels oh on the person's screen. Yeah. And like the the metrics, um, I was working for a business publication at the time that wrote about the business of video games. And so it was a gigantic deal. And we were all sure that that was going to be the next big thing. Right. And then and then they imploded well, and blew up. It's only, when I, think I they were bought by Microsoft and something happened. When I started an IGN 11 years ago, was like that's when I, my first memories of in-game advertising was stuff like Rainbow Six Vegas. Yep. Because like you'd be like uh, going through a level in a mall, and you know the uh, advertisements would all be real advertisements real. Yeah. for like and stuff they like them in with the internet, like they for stuff like Seven Up and which I'm weirdly torn on like, because it's like if you're yeah. playing a game like that and it has an advertisement for like like Six Up, you're like this is nonsense uh, yeah. and it takes you oh, out yeah. of it. But Damon, your first exposure to in-game advertising was probably Ninja Turtles two for the NES, where or, Pizza Hut signs. Or Yo Noid, yeah. friend of the show. Well, I was gonna say, yeah. yeah, that's that's a different kind of game. Yeah. The whole game is the what advertising. It is Pizza Hut on the signs in the background of TMNT two. Yeah, and oddly yeah. enough, they can kill you. Like they'll <laughs> fall off the wall and hurt you. So you're actually Pizza advertising. Hut signs? Yeah, they're Pizza Hut signs, and the the game had a, a coupon for Pizza Hut pizza. I remember that. Yeah. No, I've seen the I signs. I didn't know they could kill you though. I mean, yeah. it's it, they can hurt you. I mean, the, if you're low on health, they'll kill you. People have figured out on it's mobile. You. Mobile games are, in some ways, they've never been worse, but in other ways, they've kind of figured out. Like it used to be so much more offensive. Um, the ads are almost always opt in now. Right. You know, it's like, hey, you finished playing this game and you earned fifty coins. If you want, you can watch an ad to get a hundred coins instead, and then you can never see an ad in your life if you don't care if that's not important to you. But that's an option that you can mm -hmm. choose to kind of opt into. So, so there's potentially a model there on console games. Um, Remember, every movie you watch. Has ads in it. Yeah, when you don't time. even notice them. It was what Unless was it? You guys just went to Power Rangers. It gets a little difficult with something like it, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> so only see fantasy movies if you want to avoid. No, yeah, like, totally. I was thinking about that for games too. There's it, no well, way. Lord of the Rings. All of those swords are made by one metal worker in New Zealand, <laughs> and he's getting mad business. Yeah, yeah, that's, now. True. that's true. I mean, I, I actually honestly, his business probably just completely evaporated after Peter Jackson finished his sixth movie. I, it would be really hard to get ads into something like Breath of the Wild, although, right. even though there is a Nintendo Switch ad. In there like, is an ad in it. There yeah. is an ad. I mean, they put a, they put a Mercedes in Mario Kart. Yeah, yeah, never say never. Right? Nintendo's not above it. No, I mean, <laughs> I hate I, I hate advertising. I hate billboards ruining beautiful landscapes. Yeah. I hate uh, I um, wrote and never published this crazy rant about I was listening to like Kid Cudi or like something that's meant to be listened to straight through on Spotify. And like music can put you in like a reverie. Like I'm walking up the sidewalk and then like one song ends and then like a Taco Bell case, like some terrible cheese monstrosity ad came in. Mm -hmm. The thing was advertising was obnoxious and the ad was obnoxious. And I'm just like, this is the worst yeah, thing. It like this, it's I mean, just a, it, one and one solution is to pay for your Spotify yeah. premium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes, it makes the world worse. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So what I'm thinking <laughs> about uh, uh, the radio advertisements in GTA, which right. are always like yeah. really smart social commentary. Uh, but what do you think about an open world t GTA type game where while you're driving around and you're listening to like a real radio station with real ads? Um, you, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much like we should talk about this, but like Comedy Button does really funny, awesome ads. A, sh mm. a show that Brian does, sure. And like I listen to Love Magic Tavern. We talk about that all the time. Yep. They do really funny, cool ads in character. Yeah. So there's a way to do it. Totally a way to do, do it. it. I love yeah. that. Yeah, um, it's great. It's weird because like when we just talk about sports games, right? Few, very few games have more ads than those do. Like well, when you yeah, look at FIFA makes soccer, sense, yeah, because yeah, they have all those billboards and like the the walls on, on, on along the side of like it's NHL hockey or something. Like that. Wait, wait, wait! What the hell just happened? Uh, we're getting ready to do video game okay. twenty questions. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, I I don't That's how you do it. I don't want to give them any ideas, basically. I don't the I, the few, fewer chances. I'm gonna I'm gonna let the this viewers in on a little secret. One time, I don't I'm not gonna tell you when or what episode. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. One time, say. Justin saw the video game yeah. twenty questions answer ahead of time, and he played dumb. Yeah. And waited till like the eleventh or twelfth question before he guessed it. Yeah. So Sheet. 
That's why I I, I don't want you to like it see through the paper. I didn't the tell I didn't tell Damon. I keep it folded later. up in my pocket so no one will see. That did happen. Well, I didn't want to like I didn't want to ruin the I know, show. I, know, I, know. I accidentally saw the game. Sorry, we can't do twenty questions this week. On that note, let's move on to the 20 questions. We, our suggestion this week comes from Scott J. All right, don't screw this up. Uh, did he say where he's from? He didn't say where he's from. That's part of the game. Yeah. It's a All right, free come on, Scott J. Does he say Mario or Mario? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, it, Let the questioning begin. Can you see your character's hands? Yes. Um, is this a console exclusive game? Yes. Good, good start, uh, except for Justin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is this pre two thousand? Yes. Is it pre nineteen ninety? No. Nineties game. Nineties <laughs> game where you can see your hands and it's a console exclusive. You ready to guess? Jeez, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if those are hands. Is this a three D game? Those are paws. Those are paws <laughs> and claws. Is this a three D game? No. And wings. Okay, so it's a side scrolling. <laughs> I don't know if you can make that leap. Well, if it's you not, can ask. Uh, you can you can see your hands, so I assume you can see the rest of the character. It's not a 3D game, right? What if you're in a tank? Good point. It eliminates that's, that's it eliminates all game. the ship games. Uh, okay, was this exclusive to a Nintendo console? Yes. Right. Oh. Okay. Nice. No, we got this. Is this so, a, is so this a SNES or N64? Or oh. Game Boy a shooty N64 game, probably a SNES game. There is only one, hmm, actually, 2D and 64 game. Is this a portable game? No. That was good. We could have uh, been trapped. Yeah, I don't want to go down good that call. road. So I think it's SNES. Well, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, is this a Super Nintendo game? Yes. The question, you, you, you asked a little quietly. The question was, is this a Super Nintendo game? The answer is yes. Yeah. Okay, Super so Nintendo exclusive. Not Super yeah. Nintendo, Nintendo exclusive. Well, we don't know it was made by Nintendo. That'll, that should be the next question. Hmm. Was it made by Nintendo? <laughs> Sam was very excited. Oh, the question is: Was the game made by Nintendo? No. Ooh. Oh, is it? that's really cool. But, but it is a SNES ex- exclusive. Exclusive. Was it? That's a lot. There's a lot of games. That... Just Final Fantasy or something like that. Yeah. Oh. Was this game made in Japan? Yes. That's ten. Mm. Secret of Mana. Act Razor. Was this SNES exclusive? Totally. Aladdin. I'm feeling Act Razor. Totally. Is this, uh, is this Aladdin a... went to Genesis also? But they're different games. Oh, that's no. We can't. <laughs> no, that's not fair. <laughs> um, man, do you want to? Um, should we get into? Let's get into genre. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just gonna say. Although we can go down a rabbit hole there because Act Razors too. It's got it's God it, Sim and platform. what is Act Razor? Mm, first of all, an overrated it, game. Because I would like hey. to ask about um, you and Mitch. RPGs first. That's where I'd go with it. Because it's Japanese and a system exclusive. Right, you're right. Yeah, I keep I keep leaning into platformer. All right, so let's find out the genre. Go for it. Oh, is it an RPG? No. Oh. Let's stop with that then. Okay. <laughs> I, I just think it's a platformer. I was sure you were right with like the Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy. Yeah, it's just a lot. We gotta narrow it down. Like I think like, Star. I don't even nice. know where we're going with this. Rystar no. came to Genesis. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's a platformer game. And we did verify it's Super Nintendo. Yep. Mega Man X. No, that came into. Those are that's a good. It's nice. See your hands. Think. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it was on PC. You can see your gun. Mega Man X was on PC. Yeah, but Damon wouldn't do that to us. Really? He might. He might. It was absolutely on PC. It came like with, back. Came then? with a special controller. I, I remember oh. the ad like it's yesterday. Wow. I didn't yeah. know that. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. It came with like Super Nintendo S controller. Um, Japanese made Super Nintendo exclusive. Is it? Uh, Where you um, can see your hands. Yeah. Okay. Is the company still around today? Yes. Ooh. Is it Konami? No. Uh, Castlevania would have been. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. There's a lot. Who made Act Razor? I don't know. Probably not Act Razor. Keep going back. Is it? Should we just ask if it's Capcom and go with the fighting games? Yeah. Because does anything preclude this? No, because that's, that's fighting games are tough, man. Those aren't exclusives. Street Fighter Two Turbo was exclusive. Yeah, because yeah, Genesis got Championship Edition. Right. Is it a Capcom game? Yes. We did it. 
Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we're getting what? no. We're no. getting there. We did it when when we've picked the game and the game is done. <laughs> Capcom. So Capcom made games like UN Squadron, which are cool shooters. Ooh. It did other shooters like that. It did uh, lots of Street Fighter and Street Fighter spinoffs. It did the Mega Man series, mm -hmm. and then it did a bunch of licensed games, as you've already mentioned. Uh, actually, by that era, they weren't doing Disney license though. But none of the no, they yes, they, they, they hit the like Super Lion Nintendo. King and stuff. But none of those Virgin. were really exclusive. Cas Castle of Illusion. Virgin. No, Capcom totally did. I mean, they at least did Aladdin. Yeah, I, I never played the Super Nintendo Aladdin. Super Ghouls and Ghosts is another one. Super Ghouls and Ghosts is a game where you can see your hands. Great one. I really like that. Ooh. Uh, we don't know what genre this is. So right? we can just yeah. go. We can spin a few questions on fighting game, platform, or stuff like that. Okay. Is it a fighting game? No. I like platform. Is it a platformer? It's 15. Uh, that's part of the genre. <laughs> Act Racer. Say that no. again? Did they make Act Racer? No, they didn't. You said I said platforming was part of the genre. Okay. So, um, is Act Racer made by Capcom? I don't no. know who made Act Racer. It's like Enix or something, I think. Yeah. And I've never really liked Act Racer. <laughs> I like the platforming parts. So I didn't ever like the god part parts. We don't have right? to. We don't have to take this time to to shit on actors. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. And then, and then Mega Man is like total platforming, so it's not that. And there's it's, there's a lot of weird games that oh, those are arcade games like Sunset Riders and stuff like that. Right? Partially a platformer. I mean, would you call well, Super? Hold on, I, I didn't say it was partially a platformer. I said that was part of the genre. So like puzzle platformer or action platform. Yeah. Okay. What are the other part genres that are? Could go I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think of games that go, like Blaster Master is like half top down shooter, half yeah platformer. Like, um, how many questions are we up to? Sixteen. You really tripped me up. Four with questions, that one, Damon. Is should we ask if it's to. based on a license? Because there's like Roadrunner, Death Valley Rally, and like all these other Capcom Sunsoft. Sure that's Sunsoft. Sorry. Yeah. It it help, Yeah. I'd Maybe it doesn't help though. We can ask if it's multiplayer mode. I just don't have any ideas in my head now. That Me neither. Yeah, I'm I'm, Mega Man and Street Fighter. Yeah, I'm totally screwed. I'm out. We might not get this. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs> Is it based on a license? <laughs> no, not based on a license. Ooh, three questions. An original that. Capcom game. Yeah. And it's it can't be like UN Squadron or anything like that? I love that game. But but I think that's too obscure for 20 questions. This is so hard. I'm <laughs> What's wrong? There's gonna be it's, this is gonna be a controversial one. Okay. When There's are gonna they? be some discrepancy. When are they not? Uh, <laughs> I'll help you if you guys need it. Right. Well, we need okay. it. What, what else did they make? make? We are what asking to make for the Super Nintendo. The Capcom. How about made? this? I disagree with something that was said already. About Actraiser being not a good game, I agree with you, Damon. You're totally <laughs> correct. Actraiser is a great game. So maybe Capcom did make Actraiser. Is this game part of a series? Yes. It's it's Mega Man X. Or Mega Man 7. It could be Mega Man 7. What other genres was that? Shooter, you might call it. Action. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, is this a Mega Man game? Yes. Woo! It's X. I mean, I understand that 7 came to SNES, but it's X. Well, there's also Mega Man Soccer. It's not Mega Man Soccer. Why? I just, I'm using my gut. We got one question left. It could totally be Mega Man Soccer. Yeah. That's two genres. <laughs> I feel like I should say, <laughs> before you make your last guess, I am not aware of any PC version yeah, I, of Mega Man X that came out at that yeah, same time. Okay, then it's Mega, Mega Man, Man X. X. Yeah, Mega Man X. <laughs> Mega Man X. Woo! All one. right. Are you sure <laughs> Mega Man X yeah. came out to PC in 1994? Yeah, I'll look at the <laughs> same time it came to Super Nintendo? Look look it up. Up. Sam and up. Justin are going to their phones <laughs> to look it up. That was great. I mean, I believe, I totally believe Sam. I mean, yeah. I've never heard of it either. I had never heard of that either. You see the either. controller it came with. I know it came cool. to other platforms later on, but I was a, I was of the understanding that at the time that was a Super Nintendo. The PC version came uh, one, one, one to two years later. Two years later. Okay. So the still mid '90s. So it was, uh, it was 1994. You in see the controller in there. There's like a little yeah. Genesis -y controller. Oh, what the hell is that? That's cool. Uh, but it's still so it had a window, a two year I was, window. I really wanted it when I was of a kid exclusivity. For some I was like, I want the. I want the the PC version of this. Are you saying it was on Super Nintendo for two years before PC? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Sam, you really sent Mega us Mac. down a bad river there. <laughs> no, I mean Sam was right. <laughs> so you don't think that was like a platform exclusive at the time it was released? Well, I mean, I I considered it one, Here, but yeah. now it's in Capcom's light Capcom's first CD-ROM game, Whoa. the ad listeners go look it up. It's called. They <laughs> you say go look it up right we've now. dug up trouble, trouble, and it has an archaeologist digging up 
a copy of Mega Man X. That ad makes no sense. It makes yeah. no <laughs> sense. It's like they're like gonna do this with like some other game, like Pitfall the Mayan Adventure or something. I think the like, port switch it to Mega Man X. The port took so long that it got covered in dirt. <laughs> what I thought would give us problems is if you guys asked if it was a sequel. Because it's like not, but it oh, takes place yeah. 100 years after the original series. Yeah. That's a so sequel. Like, yeah. I would 100% call Mega Man a platformer. It's, I would call it an action platformer. Yeah. It's, you know. Oh, I love that distinction. That was yeah. the only contraction like word I could think yeah. of that was like action platformer. Almost every platformer. With this puzzle is an platformer, platformer, too. Yeah. But I would call Mario just a platformer. Are you jumping on those dudes' heads? That's an action. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's not with that action, but <laughs> Mega Man's so much more about shooting. That's true. Would know. you say Contra is an action platformer or a platform? I think shooter? that's a run and gun. Yeah, I, agree. <laughs> yeah. I actually a run agree. and I mean, gun adventure. Yeah, <laughs> I love twenty questions. It's an open air adventure. Yeah, yeah. we got there. We got there. Uh, before we go this week, let's share what we've been playing. Brian and I both beat uh, the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Yeah, luckies. And uh, yeah. I'm just obsessed with Korok seeds, and I have now, like my now you're on the Korok really seeds. trying to get all 900. I'm, I was talking, yes, I'll try, but not right now. Okay, we'll good. see. Just Every smoke. plane ride for the rest of my life. That's a good yeah. idea. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I beat Zelda a while ago and put it down. Um, and I was not joking earlier. I am obsessively nightly playing Binding of Isaac. Nice. I know I'm years late to that game, but I started it on the Switch um, yeah. just because I was looking for a new Switch game to play. And then when I was really good, I figured I, that game's kind of like PC first. And so then I switched to the PC version. Now. Can you do me a favor and explain to me like what the hook that keeps bringing you back? Because I I'm yeah. I have it on Switch now. Yeah. I played it for like an hour or two, and I like it. Yeah. But when I die and everything's gone, I'm always just like, what's my, yeah. what's my sort of like... What's no, I mean, I have never done a faster 180 on a game. I think the art style is just abhorrent. It's just poop and fetuses. And it's it. just, I, that's, I, that's, I, that's what keeps me away from the game. And I really, I really don't like that at all. But, uh, and, and then you die and you lose everything and you start over and you're like, what's the point? And, and the point is, I have never... Like, lots of games claim every single time you play, it's different. And like Binding of Isaac is the one game that I think truly, like, you are so different at the end. Like, I'm shooting lasers in one run. In another run, I'm shooting bullets that are as big as the screen. In another run, I'm, it, they're all, I'm shooting, like, a boomerang around that's on fire. And in another run, I'm pooping out things. And, like, you, you, you get a, two abilities each floor, and they all stack onto each other in weird ways and um, synergize with each other. That if you have, like, you're shooting tears in the game, and you might yeah. get tears that explode, then you might get something that makes their explosions more powerful, then you might get something that all these effects are so insane that, and every single room is different, and every single enemy is different, and you collect different stuff that it, that one more run of like, uh, uh, I have never played a game where that truly followed through on the promise of each run feeling completely different than the one before. That's awesome. Um, but it, it feels weird in the beginning and it's hard to get past the art. And so I completely understand how people are, are their first impression is negative. Sure. Yeah. Uh, since I finished Zelda, I have a lot more shrines that I would like to get to someday. But I know they're going to be updating it later on this summer with like new dungeon and new content. So I may wait for that. I was planning on going back to Horizon to finish that, but instead, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to jump into something new, like Persona Five. Yeah, uh, I got that ready to go. Yeah, I was tonight. I was going to start that this weekend. Actually, I'm currently playing. Um a bunch of games on Switch. I just finished Snake Pass, which I 100 percented. You own every Switch you game? You 100%ed it? Yeah. Wow. Um I own really I am most Switch games. Yeah. Yeah, all those yeah. coins? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It took so, about six, seven hours. I really like that game. But some are harder than like, oh, the last that are just super hard. The last two levels of that game, they introduce wind. Oh. And your snake is just flopping all over. It's very, <laughs> very difficult. But it's a really interesting, like physics-based um, puzzle platforming type game. Yeah. Um, I'm also playing Graceful Explosion Machine, which launched exclusively on Switch, and I think it's coming to other platforms later. It's very, um, it's like a very sort of geometry boards meets uh, Rezo Gun shmuppy uh, exploding arcade game. Um, I'm listening. Really cool. It's re you, you'll really like it's it. It's a Damon game for sure. Um, and then I was poking around with the port. Of Lego City Undercover, played some co-op with Max Scoville here at IGN. Yeah, hey, you were a big um, fan of that. I really yeah, I really like that game, and it's cool on handheld mode. So, and yeah, I'm gonna check out Persona Five this weekend. And Sam's playing Breath of the Wild. You got it forever and ever. Uh, before we go, real quick, we're doing something cool on IGN this weekend. We are hosting the Fate of the Furious red carpet live stream, featuring the whole cast of the movie in New York. Uh, you can watch it live this Saturday, April 8th from 3.30 p.m. Pacific. That's 6.30 p.m. Eastern. You can catch it at youtube.com slash IGN. Nice. Check it out. 
And that is all the scoops that we have for you this week. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop. And we're out.